I'm being sued by Jesse Ventura because of like what's in the book. I'm like, why is he suing you? Like, I don't. Okay, so and you were there during that. Yes, I was there. I saw it. I was there the whole time. Our big boss man happened to be on our side of the city, and he was keeping track of how the platoons were doing. He tweaked me a little as the other sniper pulled in front. He's going to break your record, he'd tease. You'd better get on that gun more. <laughs> right, so uh, who's he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> now you're making me uncomfortable. Yep. And I call him. I'm like, hey, man. He goes, it's true. Chris has been murdered. Good afternoon. This is the JP Denell podcast, episode 28. I am JP Denell, and as always, I have my brother Lucas with me. What's up, buddy? What's going on, dude? How are you? I'm freaking fantastic. Freaking fantastic. I like that. That's yeah, a lot of Fs. Yeah, it is. I, do, you, do you ever hear yourself on our podcast and think, wow, I said that word weird? Every single episode. So anytime I say anything with F, I feel like uh, my lip gets caught behind my tooth, and then it's like a... Huh. And it drives me nuts. I've never noticed. Yep. So I'm trying to avoid all F words now. Well, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Before... So this is going to be a full episode of just Q&A. Just We've Q &A, got some baby. pretty good questions that we want to get to. Uh, before we jump in, what questions do you have? What do you want to talk about or think about or open up about? What opening thoughts does Lucas have? Oh, man. You know, open up a can of my thoughts. Uh, so there are a lot of, of things that we've had the opportunity to discuss. My biggest thought overall, like now that we're, what is this episode 28 into this, my biggest thought is how cool the JP Donnell podcast community has become online. It's pretty rad. It's, it's awesome to see all of the Instagram posts. It's so cool to see like the shares and stuff that we're getting, but the amount of interaction that we're getting on the YouTube channel from literally from all over the world and all of the people who are former, um, you know, servicemen and women from again, all over the globe yeah. that are reaching out and they're, you know, commenting on our channel or saying that something helped them or that, you know, listening to your stories has helped them in their face. The biggest thing that's on, on my mind today as we you know, dive into this episode is looking at all that stuff and what an encouragement it is. And so I'm, I'm curious as we hop into Q and a is, do you think our podcast is accomplishing what, we set out to do in the beginning from those first conversations in my office as uh, all the rest of the Jesus and jujitsu guys are running out where you're like, Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? And I was like, Oh, here it is mm -hmm. being called into the principal's office in my own office. Well, what was the original intent of the podcast? It was to provide value, right? Share lessons and experiences from life and tie them into leadership. Yep. To open up people's minds to seeking the Lord and receiving salvation. 100%. To be able to commit their lives to Christ. To provide value to Echelon Front. Yeah. To bring awareness to Echelon Front, to drive people back to Echelon Front. The whole ecosystem, as we call it, mm -hmm. at Echelon Front. The ecosystem of... Echelon Front, Origin, Jocko Fuel. And I, when I look at my ecosystem, it's Echelon Front, Origin, Jocko Fuel, Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu yeah. on the path and this podcast. Little Cattle Co's in there too? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why I was just like getting ready to say and like, which is funny you said that is Little Cattle Co is tied into almost all those except right. for Origin and Jocko Fuel. Um, but they... Little Calico, we, <laughs> yeah. they, we provide meals to the FTXs because they were looking for higher end meals for those FTXs. And so Steven um, and my wife, they cater those through Little Calico. Right. Like, and so people are getting, depending on the budget of the client, they're getting tacos and burgers and or sirloins. And it's like, you know, slice up Not sirloin so taco bar. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's crazy. And so you have that aspect of of little Calico's connection. And then on the path it's, well, I mean, I was literally just reading a message of a buddy who was like, Hey, is your printing company up and running? I need shirts for my company. And another guy was like, Hey, I need, I need shirts for my military unit. He wants them for his whole military unit, bro. Yeah. And so it's like, awesome. I have another buddy that 
I don't. Uh, I don't want to say the company's name. Then don't say it. I wasn't going to, but I was trying right on a piece of paper. And no, I was trying to. Like the table. Paste. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he, a good buddy of mine. He wants to when we're ready. You know, obviously, if, if the pricing is equal and or better to what he's currently getting, switch everything over to on the path printing. Whoa! And the volume of shirts that he does, like a year, it's unreal like it's an unreal number that's pretty cool it's it's insane so there's like all these things i mean how many people have you talked to about salvation and the lord and you know bible studies and um you know things that they should be doing and answering questions dude it's it's been at least a weekly occurrence since we since we got started doing this, there and there's some of those emails that have gone back and forth like several several different ways, and there's some of them that I still need to get back to that folks that are just asking questions or uh, that they have, you know, they want to know where to to start in their Bible study or they don't know how to find God, and they're they're doing that that search or they've got the you know the really hard questions of, you know, why. Why would God allow all of this suffering to happen in the world if mm-hmm. he was a good God? And so, you know, from from the theological to the philosophical and, and every space in between, like those those questions have been so cool. And some of them are as simple as, hey, what verse was it that you guys talked about in this episode? I'm like, yeah, that's a super easy answer to yeah, some of these uh, some of these others that are a little bit more difficult. But man, it's been such a joy to get to work through those mm-hmm. and and see all of that. One of the things that's been really cool for me is uh, we've got a, a couple of churches now in Kenya that go and they use the YouTube channel that my sermons are posted on, uh, the First Baptist Church Lake Dallas YouTube channel, and they use that for their midweek teaching. Oh. Is that they So that, yeah, they found um, all that stuff, and then they've started listening to our podcast. And so they'll send me a message and they're like, we love you and JP. Like, that's very cool. And that's been, yeah, in Kenya, right? Dude, that's unreal. So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been super neat to see how they are reacting to, to this stuff. And they're like, yeah, this is, this is fun. And like the war stories, they're like, we, we don't always love, um, all of the war stories because we live in a place where there's open rebellion and all that. They're like, but, uh, how the war stories apply to God was was always really important to us to be able to hear because of the situation that we're in. I'm like, dude, that that for me, that's unreal. That's crazy, right? So, uh, yeah, all of all of those things. It's been it's been a ton of fun, and it's really filled in a pretty significant void in my life coming from what we were doing with the Reverend and the Reprobate, which was a podcast I started back in 2020. And we, we did tons and tons and tons of interviews Mm -hmm. where I was having to take point on, on most of those interviews. And then the the guy who co-hosted with me, his name is Danley Gibson. He's a great dude. We get to interview a a ton of really incredible, really awesome people. And now in this role where I'm at, like co-hosting and producing this show has been such a, I'm, I'm trying to find the best way to put it it's been such a joy to get to do because Mm -hmm. there's no pressure on me to make sure that I'm keeping everything flowing. So much of our on air relationship has been so natural. The guests that we've had on have been so incredible that instead of like being in a place where I'm like searching for the next question that I have to ask, I find myself more often in a place where I'm just like, completely enraptured in the stories that other people are telling or that you're telling. And then when you're like, Hey, do you have any questions? It's kind of like, I got to shake myself out of it. But yeah, yeah, actually I do. I, I tried to do my best to, to, you know, pay, pay close attention and to take good notes. So yeah, it's been, it's been a ton of fun, a ton of fun for me getting to meet all these folks has been really cool. Yeah. I love it. Um, you know, I was just, as we're talking, I, I, I pulled up a, a group message that I have on signal. Um, with a group of guys that were at the origin immersion camp this summer. Okay. Good solid group of guys. Yep. They were there the last previous years and they actually were the ones that reached out to me 
before camp and asked if I would do some sort of a Jesus and Jiu Jitsu buddy Bible study thing. Nice. And when we were there, it just grew each day. And we ended up baptizing a handful of people at immersion camp. I remember you guys telling that story. That's so <laughs> cool. It was unreal. But, you know, these guys, you know, so uh, my buddy Casey flies from Alaska out to the immersion camp. And then Jim, Connor, Aaron, John, Tyler, they all drive. So they all get from that same region and they drive out there. And it's like that core group of six guys that the last couple of years. <clears throat> and, you know, most of them are, are in law enforcement. So love what those guys do. They obviously all train jujitsu. Um, our buddy Connor just recently competed um, in a, in a tournament. Josh and I, I think we've talked about on Jesus and jujitsu. Uh, but anyways, these guys are just, awesome guys that listen to the podcast and they provide value. And I was trying to find this quote that Jim put in the the signal group. And I, I just found it. I was scrolling back to, it was on January 30th. He said, I heard someone say this today. When you get lazy, you disrespect the ones who believe in you. Oh man. <laughs> Bro. And he goes, I'd like to apologize. I can do better guys. Wow. And then Aaron goes, me too. Connor goes, man, Jimmy, not going to lie. That hits home hard right now with some things going on at work. Thank you for this. Josh Strasberger goes, that's real. Good word. Our other buddy, Stefano, says, I want to apologize too. I've been I've been letting this work situation affect my mood. I'm getting back on the mat and back in the gym after my sad spell, ready to give it my all. And then Tyler goes, love it, Jim. John goes, amen, brotherly Jimothy. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> you have like these like little bands in there. Yeah. Um, anyways, it was just, it was just incredible. Uh, just, just thinking about like, I, this is what I get access to is these amazing humans that through jujitsu, that through what Pete and Amanda Roberts have built up with Dodeco and and John Milan and Dennis and you know Alexei and all those guys out there, and then partnering with Jocko, like I get pulled into that ecosystem. Right, it's unreal. And then because of that, I now have this group of guys that I we can just sit and we can talk and you know we'll send Bible verses to each other and like, hey guys, I have a prayer request. If you could talk about this, and it's just. Oh man, it's just amazing. Um, so anyways, just wanted to give those guys a shout out. I just, I knew there's that quote in there and I was like trying to find it. Cause I remember when I read it, I was like, Oh man, just something to think about yeah. when you get lazy, you disrespect the ones who believe in you. So if you're, a, I mean, you're a parent, I'm a parent. Mm -hmm. Think about the just the way your son looks at you and thinks about you. Now he's a little bit young for him to like fathom stuff. So, right. I, but I want you to think about it. Yeah. There's a new put phase your, that he's put in. yourself in my shoes with my daughters who are 12 years old. Yep. How they look to me, how Aiden, I think still does. Right. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Your spouse. Now I'm uncomfortable. If I can steal one of your lines. Yeah, you, you know, it's yeah, just, for sure, it, and it's just like, and that's, but that's, that's what you need. We need groups of men and women. I'm saying men and women because the women out there, you need a group of women that do this. Yeah, you know, and, and for me, having a group of guys like these guys, um, uh, Mike Wynn, who is also in this group text, and I mean, there's just so many, so many things that I just I'm so thankful for, and it's just because of the ecosystem. So I would say, uh, yes. I believe that we have accomplished a portion of what we want to accomplish. Yeah. Now there's still more. Have to do. we hit all the checks? Yes. Mm -hmm. But we're not even close to like the impact that needs to be delivered. Mm -hmm. We're not even impact to we're not even close to the amount of lives that need to be led to Christ. We're not even close to the amount of lessons that we can share and that we can reiterate. And we're not even close to the amount of interviews that we need to do to get people's stories out there so that we can learn from them and we can give like guys a proper recognition like mike's guys yeah you know like yeah so speaking of getting people on the podcast uh, the the failure i've had of not having danny zine back on is epic and i will rectify that soon because i need we 
need to hear the rest of his story. Oh yeah, it's got to be. I mean, it's got to be finished. That's a that's a couple of months long cliffhanger that we have all been. Nice little bookend. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. So, yep. Oh man, but there's a lot of stuff that's that's got to happen there. Do, I've got to say, so you you were talking about my son that there's a lot that he he's not getting, and I I totally agree with that. This is a question. This has been. I say this is a question. This has been one of the. Uh, the battles at the Pinkert household is how much my son actually cares that I exist. Right. Because, <laughs> because I always say stuff like that right before you take a drink. Yeah. Uh, because you know, at, at 18 months old, he's, I'm, I'm seeing some significant changes from like in the beginning, but like for the first like six or nine months, like dad, it doesn't matter that I'm around. I'm a safe person, mm, right? But yeah. I say it doesn't matter that I'm around. Obviously, it does matter that I'm around. But he needs mom way more than he needs me in, yeah, factual. in that time, right? So, and for a lot of different reasons. But now we're at the point that, you know, as soon as I shut the door, like wherever he's at, if he hears that door shut whenever I come home, like I'm hearing <laughs> dad ass scream yeah. throughout the house and he's coming at me and I was telling you at lunch, that like now we're in the place where he want like he'll come up to me in the mornings. He gets up like right around six, and so we get him, bring him up, and then I'm either getting ready for the gym or jujitsu, and he'll sit on the edge of the bed and he'll look at me and he'll go cuffle, cuffle. And oh, I'm yeah, like, oh scruffle, yeah, he wants to scuffle. scuffle. Yeah, he wants a little scuffle for the morning. And that's amazing. And it's great. <clears throat> it's the, amazing. The other thing that I'm noticing is like whatever I do, he's doing. If I'm leaning against the wall, He's he'll yeah wall. he'll like turn and look and just kind of e- inch himself back and back up to the wall. I was looking in the cabinet and was like kneeling down because our cabinets are, are really low. So I was kneeling down. I had my my chin on on my knee and I was like, huh, what am I gonna get? And he and I hear beside me, hmm. And I turn to look at him and he's got his little hand all mushed up against his face like I did. I was Bro, like, this. So awesome. Okay, so on the one hand, it's awesome. And then I was like, this is flipping dangerous, dude. Yep. Because now we're in that, like, because he's going to start you say mimicking. flipping dangerous, guess I know. what he says. Yep. He, he will. And so now everything, I'm so aware of everything that I'm doing at the house now because he's starting to imitate all of it. And it's so, scary. This is a little. Uh, heads up. Oh boy. For you. Mm -hmm. And a reminder for you and a reminder for me and a reminder to our listeners that also comes down to the self-talk. I just want self-talk out loud. So if you're, I mean, but think think about that. If our kids see and hear us talking bad about ourselves, what do they think is okay to do? Talk bad about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just something just to put out there. And it's funny you bring that up because text messages now so they don't see it. <laughs> send them to me. And <laughs> yeah, I'll just I agree with you. I'm like, you loser. <laughs> Get your life together. <laughs> Jerk. I'll see you in five minutes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Um, you know, and like, so again, it's fun. It's very unique that we're talking about this right now because one of the other things I was going to bring up from this group text was one of the guys, he, uh, you know, a lot of guys are competing in jujitsu one of the guys jim goes sorry i failed you guys next time and um he goes was up eight to two got two takedowns got caught with the straight ankle and someone goes single elimination he goes yep sorry i failed you guys next time and one guy's you didn't fail the other guy's um well now you have experiences to build on how you scored a bit of points you just worked you know blah blah, blah. work up your defense um he goes jim if you ever say failure uh, that you're a failure again. I'm going to drive up there and slap the whack out of you. <laughs> and he goes, thanks guys. And Josh Strausberg goes, he's right. No negative self-talk that will catch a whooping. And another guy goes, my tournament I did last June, I went one in seven, bro. It's all about getting out there and getting experience. You win. If that's just a cherry on top, he goes, none of us are pros. We all have our day jobs. And it's another great reminder. Like yeah. the attitude these guys have towards life. I'm like, yes, like I feed off of that. And, um, and he goes, I meant smack the, uh, out of you. I don't know why it said whack. And one of the guys goes, I like the phrase smack the whack out of you. I thought it was just your hillbilly phrases. <laughs> so <laughs> like all these guys are going back and forth. And then the guy, Jim who lost goes, that's why I love you guys. Nothing like the threat of a butt whooping as motivation. Um, and I like the phrase smack the whack out of you. I did too. So anyways, it's like all these guys, <laughs> Are just like going back and forth and just encouraging 
Yeah. That's the just the guy goes out there, he loses a jujitsu tournament, he feels bad, and all of his buddies are like, dude, awesome, awesome, awesome. You went out there, you competed, you went out there, that was awesome. And he and then he goes, I did succeed in my mission of eating fifteen white castle cheeseburgers <laughs> and a large fry Legend. from the gas station. Not a total Legend. loss today. That's so awesome. And um anyway, so it just pretty funny uh, i just love being able to you know communicate with these guys and unfortunately i do a bad job actually responding to a lot of the messages because i'm in so many different group messages mm -hmm. but we created this after immersion camp for all the guys that just wanted to check in on each other mike wind does a great job like he's always just like roll call how's the guys doing who needs prayers what's going on right and guys are able to be like boom 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 or hey yep praying for you praying for you um, I know Danny Zeem's in here as well, and he does that a lot uh, as well, which is always um, awesome. But um, yeah, so I think it's important that we that we find those groups, that we find the people that are going to build us. And the reason why I was sharing that is because you asked, like, hey, how, do you think we've accomplished what we want on the podcast? I think we're in the right direction. I don't think I'll ever feel like we've truly accomplished what. I want us to accomplish with the podcast and I feel that you'll feel the same way. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that I'm not proud of what we've been able to do. And I'm also extremely, extremely humbled and thankful for the opportunity that God has given us with this platform for us to be 100%. able to just, just to do this and to sit and talk with people and, you know, just the YouTube community that's been growing, uh, has been awesome. Uh, I know we do have merchandise that's going to be coming out soon. We're yep. going to have flags, banners, stickers, shirts, all those things with a lot of the different sayings that we've talked about. And um, it's going to be rad when we when we see those out and about and getting tagged in that and everything. So It's going to be busting. <laughs> I mean, we're headed in a good direction. And then... <laughs> now we're here and then and yeah now we've arrived you ready to get into uh some questions <laughs> let's do this i got a business idea yeah, you got a business idea beggars can't be choosies folks so uh, there is you. there's one question that i think we have gotten more than any other and it has to do What's with it like being uh, so shredded yeah actually yeah you want to go ahead and yeah, what what is it like being so shredded? What's it like having the body of the rhino from the Spider Man comics? It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean two forty two with a six pack. That's what I'm talking about, Let's dog. Let's go, dog. Mm -hmm. I'm one eighty one with a small keg. Yeah. Like one of those at home kegs. Isn't it that, crazy? Like, you have to like have filled I up am, by a friend. Like I need <laughs> obviously I, I need to lose like 30 to 40 pounds. I was thinking that earlier. Yeah, I know. I was watching you after we had sushi, and I was like, you guys Bro. got at least 30 to drop. Yeah, <laughs> which is probably accurate. 30 to 40 I could drop. But still, even with like me being this heavy, it's like still. <laughs> it's a power belly, dude. It's 100%. It's, it's percent. That's what it it's is. It's weird, man. I'm That's fine with it. it. I'd rather have a power belly six-pack than... Than what I've got rocking with the, my six pack that I had to draw on with an Expo marker. <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> so, all right. So the question though that oh, we've got so wasn't then, about being shredded. Yeah, no, it wasn't about being shredded. <laughs> Remember when the more Jesus than, the Jiu Jitsu episode <laughs> one time Stephen's like, we've all been shredded at one point. And I was like, I didn't say anything, but later I was like, hey, uh, I've got to bring this up. Yep. None of you. I when I was in buds was shredded. Yep. Because I was 140 pounds. Yeah. Not Josh was super lean one time but mm -hmm. you guys in the middle have never been in the shredded realm i was isaac shredded and steven. at one point yes yeah. you were but i'm yeah. talking like steven and isaac using the nope. word shredded it was comical it's relative no it's, it's relative. actually not yeah no it's not no <laughs> those guys are massive humans and what i'm saying is yeah. not a negative thing at no. all no, they're beasts they're they're, they're literally like silverback gorillas in, yeah in they freaking are. they're like, monsters yeah yep but polar bears that's the reason yep. why steven's nicknamed the polar bear and isaac's <laughs> <laughs> silverback you know yeah it, those guys are just but it was just funny like the use of the word shredded that one time i was just like bite your tongue bite your tongue bite your tongue mm -hmm. and then yeah. i brought it up one time he's like really did i say that i'm like yeah, he yeah. Goes, oh yeah you did oh wait <laughs> that's yeah. what that's what, hey yep. you talk about humility steven little anytime if you're like hey bro you said this and he's like oh i didn't mean to say that he never he never tries to argue it have you noticed that? He never tries yeah, to defend himself. Yeah. He just straight up will take ownership and be like, 
oh yeah hey shouldn't have said that that's what i've noticed like he does that extremely well so does isaac and so does josh nice i need to be better at that i i get really insecure yeah i'm thinking about i used to i don't i don't think i do anymore but i used to be super insecure and instead of being able to just talk through it i would like try to defend myself and i remember that was some uh constructive feedback that i got from an old guy when i was a new guy in the seal team huh what old guy uh pepper <laughs> oh yeah we've talked about pepper yeah, before i want yeah. him on the podcast one day that would be you. that'd be great as long as you guys aren't gonna fight each other because i don't think i could tip the uh the no. the bar owner and all that like it wasn't no. it was him that you guys were talking about his retirement party right oh no no that was just straight um, <laughs> <That's bad. laughs> that was that was a good story so yeah, and, and what you're saying about the Jesus and Jesus, you guys are right. They are, they're all really great at taking, um, n- not. It's weird to call it constructive criticism. It's weird to call Just it feedback? like correction. Yeah, feedback is is the best way to put it. Yeah, that that's probably why you and I are on this show together is because both of us want to defend ourselves, and those guys would be too good at taking criticism. We're like, nah, <laughs> we want to show where we can argue with each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, getting to so the question that we've got just about more than any other has to do with your position. So you were the um, point man, lead sniper for Delta Platoon. Yep. Your counterpart was a guy named Chris Kyle. Yes, sir. Who was the the point man, and lead sniper for uh, Charlie Platoon with, yep. under the leadership of uh, Leif Babin. Yep. And we've got a lot of folks who, because Chris has become a bit of a cultural icon where the SEAL teams are concerned. Uh, his book, American Sniper, which I've got a copy of here, was a New York Times bestseller. They turned it into a movie starring Bradley Cooper, which did incredibly well. Um, he had a, a wonderful, uh, I guess, organization charity that he ran where he was helping veterans whenever they came home. Um had a, a tragic and uh, untimely death. Like I remember where I was whenever I heard Chris Kyle passed away. Like yeah. listening to that news on the radio was devastating to us. Yeah. And, and just as a, a civilian who had no attachment to the military, no attachment to the Navy SEALs or anything, just having read the book and, you know, knowing the story, you you actually got to work with him. And there's so many people that want to know, like, what was it like working with Chris Kyle? If there's a question that we get more than any other, that's, that's it. And that's seconded by like, so Jocko's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> right. So, yeah. but but yeah, the, I'm and I'm curious too. And it's one of those things. It's it seems I don't. know, It's awkward for me to bring up because I know that there's a lot that that surrounds your friendship with yeah. with Chris. You guys were um, y'all were buddies. That there's a lot of kind of mystery and stuff that surrounds his passing and the tragedy that was that was there. And then again from my perspective and my point of view it's like asking questions like this are sometimes difficult because i don't want to to dig up things that are weird that you don't want to talk about or or weird feelings or anything like that we talked about this beforehand this was a question that you put down yeah. so i'd i'd like to kind of open up yeah and open dude, up with this and and I'll remind I you, I know I've told you this before, but I'll yeah. just remind you and remind our listeners that submit questions. Like I tell every other podcast that I'm on as a guest, people are always like, hey, is there questions off limits? I'll straight up just say, I'd rather not talk about it. Or I'll divert the question and start talking about something and then bring it to another way. Like it just like get us away from a topic that I don't want to talk about. I've done yeah, that before for sure where somebody, it was funny. One of the guys who was editing the podcast, he goes, I just realized what you did when I asked this question. I'm like, yeah, he goes, that was impressive. He goes, I thought you answered my question. He goes, yeah. then I went back and he goes, you didn't even address the question. You just talked about something similar and brought it back to another question that I had asked. I'm like, yeah, because I didn't want it to be awkward uh, and just be like, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Because there's also that aspect, like, I just don't, like, when, when some people are like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. I'm like, okay, I respect that in people. Yeah. But I think some people make things a lot bigger than they actually are to get credit and recognition. That's true. So I, that's, a, that's a problem that I have. Um, I have a problem with veterans um, assuming that they are – 
entitled to stuff just because they're a veteran. Yeah. I don't know. So that's me. That's me personally. I've, I'm with you. I, I have that same feeling towards pastors because there are a lot of, there are a lot of people who are in clergy positions yeah. that, you know, that's why, for instance, like with, uh, for me, has been so gracious in my training and working around my schedule and making things happen so that um, I'm afforded the ability to train at double fives. Yeah. Right. Yep. And, and that is one of those things that like, even with, with something simple, like, Hey, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm going to be able to do this. Or, you know, what requirements are you going to have of me? Because I don't know that I'm going to be able to have the time commitment that other, some of your other students are going to have mm-hmm. that there are, are some pastors that I have watched come into situations and they're like, Hey, this is what I need. Um, I'm going to be able to train once a month. So I only really want to have to pay what it's going to look like for me to be once one, a month. One thirtieth of a, your rate. Yeah, I need to. I need to be able to pay one thirtieth of your rate. Like exactly, because uh, this is what I I'm able to do. Mm-hmm. Also, because I'm uh, because I'm a pastor, I don't make a ton of money. So maybe like if I could just train here for free, or could I get a discount? Like, can I have the gi for tax free? Because like there's all of these like weird things that happen that people that are in these positions like they feel entitled to <laughs> it makes me to so discount, bro. Like I I can't this, even oh ask about it, right? And and uh, yeah, and and for Miga, you know, just just told me when we had some of those conversations, he was like, you know what, uh, train where you can train. Um, if, uh, if there's something that I can help you out with, you know, just, uh, let me know. And then you can just come in and, and I'll give you some of my time. If there's a weird time where you can train like that is it's unreal, d- dude, that's, in- that's incredible. But this like, Hey, do you have a military discount? Do you have a discount for clergy? Like what, what kind of things can we do? Like those things are so insane to me that people feel entitled to them. So yeah, I, the, the way that you feel about the veterans that ask for it, like I, I feel the same way about the the pastors that do so there's a he's a team guy we were in buds and i remember in S, in buds together and sqt and when we were in sqt his vehicle got towed he parked in a place he wasn't supposed to be parked in yep guess what's gonna happen you're gonna get towed his vehicle gets towed mm-hmm. so he goes to the tow lot in coronado to get his vehicle and he's getting his vehicle and they tell him the price. And he's like, oh, man, like, do you have a military discount? Can you give me like, can you give me a discount on this? Like, I'm, you know, this is what I'm. And then he's like already trying to drop the SEAL card when he's not a SEAL. He's like, I'm in, you know, advanced SEAL training. I'm about to be in the SEAL teams, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, hey, this is the price. And they have a, 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 a sticker on their window that says we support our veterans, mm-hmm. you know. And because they're not going to give him his car for free or at a crazy discounted price like he wanted, he, he like makes a big deal about it. He's like, oh, you guys said that you guys support veterans, yet you're not supporting me. He goes, you guys should take the stickers out of your window. And I'm like, I, this is the most awkward I've ever been. Yeah. Just like sitting there. I'm just like, you're a moron, dude. <laughs> you're a complete moron. Way to make us all look like yeah, we all. Yep. yep. Thanks. Thank you. So. Yes. Um, yep. Yeah, that happens. So it's all good. Part of it, not a big deal. But anyways, so working with Chris. <laughs> Chris is hilarious. Really? Yeah. 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 He's a really funny dude. Um, you know, he just man, he would do stuff to piss me off because he knew it just would make you get me to like level ten mad. ASAP, like he would slap me in the back of my head. And that's one of the things like <laughs> we're probably fighting if you slap me in the back of the head. Yeah. Like it's an instant, instant anger rage thing for me. Maybe not anymore that I'm 41, but bro, when I was a young team guy, it was, I, I don't care who you are. We're fighting. Um, and he would do it and just, I would turn around like ready to go. And he'd just be sitting there smiling. He has a big old dip in his lip, his sunglasses on crooked and just like laughing. And he just would have that laugh. And you know, he's a, he's a bigger, taller dude. And I'd just be like, (laughs) you know, I'm like, bro, like I get so (laughs) mad and it was him and you do that. And so for one time I decided I was going to get him back. You know, Chris had, um, a hat that he wore 
all the time. You know, the orange Texan hat. Oh, uh, yeah. With the, the, the longhorn on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he would wear that hat all the time. And, you know, this is our second workup. So he's on his third platoon. And he had already gone on two deployments with his hat. You know, he'd wear the hat with him. He'd bring it with him. If it wasn't on a mission, he's in the planting space or his area chilling, wearing this hat. And we were doing some stuff and he set it down. And, um, like I came up and he was distracted and I grabbed the hat and instantly just tucked it into one of the pockets of, um, my uniform and um was able to put it in to where i was able to hide it i think i put it like i can't remember like exactly where i grabbed it and put it but man and then so i'm just like sitting there so i'm like interacting with him to like keep him distracted and like we're working through stuff and then all of a sudden like he realizes like where's my hat where's my hat and he's like looking at me and these other guys like where's my hat like where's my hat i'm like i don't know chris i'm like i just i've been here with you the whole time and now he's just like like freaking out and so he's like asking everybody where's my hat where's my hat Wait. right and i was like i am not telling anybody i've got his hat <laughs> <laughs> and um so this is going down we break for lunch and like he's asking everybody he's like where's my you know oh yeah he's an adamant at this point dude he is <clears throat> getting very angry very angry and so we get back and i told one of the guys i'm like hey i've got his hat and they're like oh my god what <laughs> like he's gonna kill you i'm like no he's not i'm like like he's he's going to kill you i'm like dude whatever i was like and so i like put on the hat and i was wait i was standing outside this building we're in san antonio for this driving course that we'd go to okay and i'm standing outside the building and i put the hat on and he sees me wearing the hat and he comes up and he's just like red faced mad. And I'm just you've sit- lied to him all day. And I'm just sitting there <laughs> just like with the hat on. He comes like gets my face, like snatches it off. And I'm just standing there like because I knew I was like, oh, we're probably going to fight. And I'm yeah. like, cool. You know what I mean? Like I prefer not to fight him, but. I'm also like not worried about it. Like I'll right. fight anybody. I don't care. Like I've been beat up before. It ain't the first. Won't be the last. You know. Yeah. And um, and he was just like like nose to nose mad. And I just <laughs> so pissed off. I just just started laughing. I just started <laughs> laughing at him. <laughs> and then he he like turns away, comes back into my face again. And uh, like I don't, re- I wish I could remember the words that were specifically said at this point. But then he ends up just like, just like, ends up laughing and smiling. And like, he, like gives me a hug. He's like, I was gonna whoop you. And I'm like, I was prepared. Yeah. I, was, I was ready. <laughs> yeah, for I it. knew. And I was just like, hey, I was like, it I wasn't just I was gonna let you whoop me. He goes, I know. That's why I thought about it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and. um like it was like we were gonna fight. One hundred percent would have been a fight. And yeah. he, you know, um, and he knew that. I knew that. We it was like one of those things where you both know you're like, man, this is it's gonna hurt for both parties. Yep. Unless one of them gets a clean knockout right away. Right. It's gonna be a, just a nasty I mean, dude, the dude used to ride Bronx. Yeah. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like he was a rodeo dude. That guy had been in a good amount of fights as well. Um and anyway, so what we do is I was like, hey, I can't remember whose idea was it exactly, but one of us had the idea to bring it inside where some of the guys were kind of taking a little nap Mm -hmm. uh, after lunch before we started our next little thing Yeah, and put the hat next to Ryan Job, who we call Biggles. (laughs) Right. And so I went in there and I put it next to him and we're kind of like sitting there and then Chris comes up, comes in there and goes, what in the, and Ryan's looking around and sees the hat. He's like, no, I I didn't. (laughs) So we made it like, so then Ryan was like, now like I, I didn't take the hat. It wasn't me. So we're kind of messing with Ryan a little bit on that one. But uh, you know, Chris was he was a very serious guy when for sure. it, when it came to work, when it came to his you know pride for our nation, when it came to his wife and his kids. Um, man, he loved, 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 loved his brother and Jeff. Yeah, and um, who was a marine and just an absolute stud. 
and loved his parents. Like yeah. his, you know, Leif Babin's still pretty close with his parents and tries to communicate with them whenever they can. Um, but yeah, I mean, Chris, you know, loved, loved Tay and the kids and his parents and his brother. And, you know, he loved our nation and he loved our military and our veterans and he loved the SEAL community. He loved the Marines that we worked with overseas. And, uh, my buddy, uh, Michael Craigholm, who listens to this podcast, yeah. uh, Space Coast Jiu-Jitsu. Yep. Uh, yeah, I follow him on the, uh, on the Instagram, on, on the gram. Yeah. Well, Michael was one of the Marine Corps officers that was in charge of the, the group of Marines in Fallujah when Chris went and worked with those Marines yeah, in Fallujah. With the Marines. Yeah, that's cool. So I look forward to us being able to get Michael out here on the podcast. That'd be cool. Just share some of those stories and just, I mean, obviously his service is like unreal. Yeah, it's insane. Um, I mean, yeah. But, is, so is his uh, teaching you jujitsu in your own garage thing that he started. That was, that was crazy. It's amazing. So I, I want to read an excerpt from, uh, from Chris's book. Okay. Um, this is in the Which chapter I, called The Devil of Ramadi. So I guarantee you I have not read that, and here's why. Yeah. I started reading his book, Okay. and Chris reached out to me and was like, hey, have you read my whole book yet? And I was like, no, I just started it. Okay. He goes, I'm being sued by Jesse Ventura because of like what's in the book. I'm like, why is he suing you? Like how, okay, how so I've heard about, this. I was like, how can he sue you? He goes, well, he's claiming it didn't happen. I just started laughing and I'm like, what are you talking about? Like it happened. We were there. Like, yeah. And, and, and Chris doesn't even say him by name in the book. Right. But it's pretty obvious who the dirt bag is. Right. right. And so anyways, um, yeah. Cause there was some kind of like altercation or something between the two of them. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so Chris is like, it's hey, alluded to in the book. Yeah. And Chris is like, Hey, would you be willing to testify? And I'm like, absolutely. And so I put the book down. Yeah. So now you can't read it if you're going to testify because yep. now you're, and I wanted you to be, be able to swear with. on the Holy Bible and to be yep. able to literally swear like, Hey, I haven't read this. I don't, I don't even know what's read in the book. I know what I saw and what I heard that night, you know? Okay. So and you were there during that. Yes, I was there. I saw it. I was there the whole time. That whole night, I was a part of everything. Yes. Trust okay. me. I've been in multiple courtrooms, like walking through this multiple times. Really? Because, yeah, because then after Chris was murdered, he didn't pass away. Remember, right. he was murdered. I, okay. I remember. Yeah. I've yeah. been, I've been ginger about that because I don't know. He was like, murdered. Yeah. He was murdered. He was Absolutely. murdered. Yeah. Um, Freaking dirtbag Jesse Ventura decides he's gonna sue Taya and the kids yeah. and the estate. Like you're gonna sue a widow. So again, went back to court and was had to testify against Jesse Ventura. Like literally looking at him, like just I was like, bro, you. I remember walking past him. I'm like, you're a disgrace to the SEAL teams. Just straight up, like you're a disgrace. And he was like red face mad at me. Was he in the military? He was in the SEAL team. Well, he wasn't a Navy SEAL. He was in the UDT teams. He never went through BUDS. Right. He was in the UDT teams, which is a precursor to the to SEAL SEALs. teams. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah, he was. He used to go to, that's why he was there. He was, he'd go all the SEAL things and yeah. Wow. Dude's a dirtbag, man. No joke. He sued a widow. Bro, that's disgusting. <laughs> Talk about your ego. Your ego getting so bad that you sue somebody about something that's written in a book because he tried to, he, he tried to say it was going to be a deformation to his character that was going to affect him running for president. Dude, you, first off, you're a <laughs> pro wrestler, right? But was, yeah, was, yeah. I, and <laughs> Bro, so I didn't know about, I don't know. Hey, maybe we'll get sued over this. Yeah. I mean, b b whatever. <laughs> what is yeah, what I, you can't take money. He, what is it? You can't, it was the whole saying like, you can't bleed a turnip or something like that. Oh, you can't get blood from a stone. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. That's it. Cool. Yep. You can, uh, what's the other one? That's like, uh, you can squish a quarter, but you can't get boogers out of George Washington's nose. Like, <laughs> like all of that, all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, yeah. Getting blood from a turnip. That's the yeah. other one. Yeah. I was like, I yeah. think to, I'm like, please yeah, the, tell there, me there's, there's a, a turnip, turnip one. one. Yeah. There is a turnip <laughs> one. So the, the way that I got just kind of even, alerted to the fact that that's who that was is I heard him talking about it on another podcast. And this has been, this was recently that I heard him talking about it. And so this is what a, almost a decade after Chris was killed. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah, it's, 
Yeah, that's that's so, insane. Uh, we're talking eleven years right now. Because it was grief, it was February dude. of two thousand thirteen. That, that is happened. absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. I know. February of thirteen is when it happened. Yeah. Wow, man. All right, so I want to read you. Uh, I want to read this to you, um, and tell me if you if you remember any of this. Uh, very shortly after I'm already started. I reached a huge milestone for a sniper. I got my 100th and my 101st confirmed kills for the deployment. One of the guys took a photo for me for posterity, holding up the brass. There was a little bit of competition between myself and some of the other snipers during this deployment to see who got the most kills. Not that we all had that much to do with the numbers. They were more of a product of how many targets we had to shoot at. It's just the luck of the draw. You don't have the highest numbers, but there's not much you can do about it. I did want to be the top sniper. At first, there were three of us who had the most kills. Two of us started pulling away. My, quote, competition was in my sister platoon working on the east side of the city. His total shot up at one point, pulling ahead. Our big boss man happened to be on our side of the city, and he was keeping track of how the platoons were doing. As part of that, he had the sniper totals. He tweaked me a little as the other sniper pulled in front. He's going to break your record, he'd tease. You'd better get on that gun more. (laughs) Well, things evened out real fast. All of a sudden, I seemed to have every stinking bad guy in the city running across my scope. My total shot up, and there was no catching me. Luck of the draw. Right, so, uh, who's he talking about? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> You're making me uncomfortable. Yeah, for sure, dude. Like you said, right place, right time. Yeah. I was in the right place at the right time as one of our lead snipers in Delta Platoon. Yeah. And I want to be very clear. My buddy, Benny, I can say his name because he's been out. Yeah, yeah. And I would like to have him on our podcast. He was a senior sniper to me. Okay. He, so this is the third guy that he's talking about. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Or it could be Matt. My okay. buddy Matt. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it could be Matt, because uh, he was, I believe, number two to Chris and Charlie Batin. Okay. All right. Um, hold on. And so uh, Matt was doing amazing things over there with Chris. Benny was doing amazing things with me over on the eastern side. <clears throat> the the reason why I would say I was our lead sniper. It was in regards to the amount of kills that I had was more than Benny. And that was because Benny was acting as our platoon chief. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. He was, you know, he was in that leadership position and yeah. Benny was being a good leader because guess what he could have done. He could have been putting himself in that lead sniper position Every single time he could have put himself in the best position. Now there's a lot of times it's like the luck of the draw. Like, Hey, I would be like, Hey Benny, like, and -and so-and-so and -and so-and-so like, where do you guys want to get set up? I'd be like, Oh, I'll take care. I'll take care. I'll take care. I'm like, cool. I'll take care. And then they don't see anything. And I'm just like, boom, like just dropping dudes. And then there's other times where I'm like, Hey, where do you guys want to set up? And Benny's like, I'm gonna set up here. I'm like, cool. I'm going to go over here. And I'm just like laying there. I'm like looking, scanning all of a sudden. And I'm like, Son of a gun, I wanted that <laughs> spot. So there's like, you know, it's just like Chris said, luck of the draw. Right. Uh, but also the thing that we have to be very clear about is there's no way we do our job as snipers if it wasn't for the Marines that we were with and if it wasn't for the rest of the platoon we were with. No, if it no. wasn't for the machine gunners and the just the regular gunfighters that are holding security, that are, you know, acting as our security gunners, like Mikey next to me, my buddy, you know, we'll just call, his nickname, we'll call him Rico, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, there's, there's you know these guys are all doing their jobs and that's why chris chris was able to do what he did because of his machine gunners right he wasn't off there in the city by himself you know he had his team i had my team i was only able to do what i did because of the soldiers of the marines that we were working with that we were working for and the ones that were with us on missions supporting us only way because if not guess what would have happened overrun by enemy fighters and we would have been killed yeah no doubt like there's no question about that. So I just want to be very clear about that. The machine gunners were like in our platoon, we're doing the bulk of the lifting and the bulk of the, of, of the fighting. We were just right place, right time. So yes, he is talking about me, but I also want to give credit where credit is due. Benny taught me what I knew about being a sniper. Another guy nicknamed Smurf. He taught me, right? Okay, yeah. He Chris, talks about Smurf in the book. Yep. yep. So Chris also taught me a lot of things about 
uh, being a sniper. He taught Matt, myself, these other guys. And so I want to be very, very clear on like, if it wasn't for Benny's guidance and leadership on that deployment, he definitely would have been in a better position to be the lead sniper. Right. I was just, he was letting me work, man. He was doing what a good boss does. Yeah. And, um, so who is the, uh, the big boss man in, uh, in this particular story? It's gotta be talking about Jocko. I was going to say, like, I mean, that's gotta to be, be Jocko. And that does sound or like it could the, be Leif Babin. Okay. Well, Leif, he, he refers to, he said the big boss man was on our side of the city. So that to me, which would, would be Jocko, which would be Jocko, right? Big boss man. Yeah. Yeah. Which that's, from listening to Jocko's podcast, from watching you guys interact at at the muster, yep. that is very much his motivational style. Like, yep. oh yeah, yeah, this other guy's catching up to you. So you better get back on that gun, dude. Which I I absolutely love. I, I love the title, Big Boss Man. That that that's how he's referred to in this, and that now, you know, years later. After uh, after Jocko's podcast has come out, after he has become this um, sort of like cultural icon, mm -hmm. that now you look at that and I'm like, it was everything I could do to stop myself from trying to imitate his voice whenever I was reading that, you know. <laughs> Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, all Americans were wanted in Ramadi, snipers most of all. Reportedly, the insurgents put up a bounty on my head. They also gave me the nickname, I'm not even going to try to say it in the language, but the devil of Ramadi. It made me feel proud. The fact is, I was just one guy, and they had singled me out for causing them a lot of damage. They wanted me gone. I had to feel good about that. They definitely knew who I was and clearly had gotten intelligence from some fellow Iraqis who were supposed yeah. to be loyal to us. They described the red cross I had on my arm. The other sniper from my sister platoon got a bounty on his head as well. His ended up being more. Well, that did make me a little jealous. <laughs> but it was all good because when they put their posters together and made one of me, they used his photo instead of mine. And I was more than happy to let them make that mistake. The Such battle... <laughs> <laughs> the bounty went up as the battle went on. Hell, I had, I think it got so high, my wife may have been tempted to turn me in. <laughs> okay, so I want to reiterate a couple of things here. One, you have not finished this book, so there's some of this stuff that like I'm reading to you for the first time. Yeah. Second, like while this is a uh, this is the JP Denell podcast, this is also about like y'all's relationship. So this isn't us like trying to turn Chris's book into into this, but these are the the interactions that you guys had. Yeah. So clearly, I, he's still pissed. I took his hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So, so what, what the heck is this story? Like there was uh do you remember any of this? Like what of yeah. this do you, uh, yeah. Do you I, I, like, tell, what is this story from your perspective? That's what I want to know. Well, I mean, so we had Iraqi soldiers that we were working with. Okay. And we also knew that a, most of them at the very beginning actually were bad. We knew that. They told us that. Yeah. Hey, you're not allowed to be alone with these Iraqi soldiers. Like, you guys all have, you know, bounties on your head. And, you know, if they can kill you and or, you know, cause something to happen to you, like, they're going to get paid. Like, we're not, you do not be alone with these guys. And we knew right. that. And so we had good Iraqis with us and we had bad ones. We had to figure out who are the good ones. You know, there's times we go down on missions and we get ambushed and we're like, okay, that's weird. They knew exactly where we we're going to be when we're at. Dude, that's who, terrifying. Who was all a part of that planning? Who did they give the info to? And then we'd start giving bad info to see what was actually passed. And be like, okay, cool. Now, and so we had to kind of figure it out. Yeah. And then we also had to help the Iraqis, the good Iraqi soldiers, figure that out as well. And then let them handle it however they wanted to handle it. Um, I'll just say that uh, they did not have the rules and regulations that we have in regards to dealing with <laughs> bad people internally. <laughs> right. Those people would we'd be like, hey, we're missing some guys. They're like, no, we're not. We're like, I thought they're we like, nope, we're good. And we're like, check, Roger cool. that. Where yeah. you? We all right. uh, sweet. We have all the people that are supposed to be here. Wow, <laughs> understood. Wow. Uh, um, but we would, um, we would just know that. And there was, I remember, I went. We went into a Target to set up an Overwatch, and the family recognized me because of, I guess, posters. And then also, it was on the Al Jazeera TV. Whoa. There was like a picture and a video of me on a rooftop as a sniper. So we knew that came from some of the Iraqis. Whoa. Yeah. So a family recognized me. 
Yeah. I was that was very uneasy that day. Okay, so and so our our interpreter got all the information, was talking with Seth, and um yeah, that's when we found that out and we're like, Oh shoot. And so they were talking like, Okay, do I go to Afghanistan? Do I go to another like country with other seals to work there, you know. Uh, I remember there was like a brief, brief moment of of Seth and I talking about that, and I was like, I'm not leaving. Like, and then it was funny because for like a week or two, it was like a week and a half. I just didn't shave. It was like I was going to grow out my beard, and it was like that right. was going to make a big difference. But it was just like, no, the unit that we're work, I could have, but that would have been, st- you know. And we're like, no, we're just, you know, it's not. It's like it can be even more obvious. A dude with this like reddish brown beard out there <laughs> you know like <laughs> right. now it's even more easier to identify so yeah that was uh it was a unique unique thing man dude that's crazy yeah uh, so i have to tell you my interpretation of this book is way different after having met you because there is some of the i think he mentions it was either i think it might have been smurf who stopped calling him the legend and started calling him the myth or there was, it was Smurf or Dauber or somebody like that. I think so. So I I want Matt to be on here because Matt was in that platoon. Yeah. And Matt is funny because he'll just be like, Hey, yeah, we gave him the, the nickname, the legend in jest. They were like teasing Chris. Yeah. That's the whole thing about the seal teams. Mm -hmm. It's like, like we are cutthroat and ruthless with our own. Like he was just like, hey, they put my picture. And I was fine with that. Yeah, I was <laughs> just like, yeah, they put the other guy's picture up. Yeah, but yeah, crazy. Yeah. So, so that was that's a, just kind of a funny thing to to look at and to see. But there, there was something about reading his story that was kind of mystical. I think, right. Because we, at the time, there weren't a lot of Navy SEALs that were in the public eye. There, we we knew about Navy SEALs primarily because of like the Discovery Channel series that was done on on Buds. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, class two thirty four. Yeah, the one yeah. that like inspired uh, Remy Adelake, and mm-hmm. you know he talks about that and and all those kind of things. So there's there's those those things that we we saw and you know hearing all of these these war stories and then seeing the stuff on the history channel that they did of like, you know, um, you know, fiercest warrior or whatever they were doing. And then be like, Oh, and former Navy seal, you know, paired with this person and what you had to learn. So like that, that was it. So to have something that was written by a Navy seal in our hands where we could look at it was crazy, you know, at, at the time. And, and there was kind of like this mythical status, particularly about Chris. And I think after his passing that it's continued to have that meeting you changed my perspective on that a, a little and not in a negative way. It changed my perspective because what it allowed me to do is like to remember that, you know, yes, you guys were, uh, and I know you're uncomfortable with this word, but I'm going to use it anyway because I think it's accurate that you guys are are he- modern day heroes because of the stuff that you did, mm. right? And and the fact that you volunteered to do it is even more incredible. But to remember that y'all are also n- human beings, flawed humans. Yeah, but you're you're people with with families, mm-hmm. and that you know had folks back home that you cared about. And now whenever you're coming home, sorting out what's next and all that. And, mm. and that all of those things, like seeing you and then getting to, to meet Jocko and Leif at the muster and hearing Andrew Paul talk and um, some of the other just incredible, um, what's the guy's name? Is it Jason Gardner? Who's yeah. one of your other instructors? Who's, who's a former team guy? Like, listening to their stories and like watching their Jason just did a, a big thing about how he was putting bugs into soil. And he was like, I had to go and I had to grow these bugs and I had to put it together a special incubator so that they could fertilize my trees. Cause there's not good soil here at the base of these trees. There's no bugs in it. I'm looking at that. I was like, that is like my middle brother. That's the kind of stuff that he's into. I'm like this, this sort of weird insanity that he has is the exact same that my brother has. And so it's, it's cool to, yeah. to get to see the, the human side and the human element of it. 
what brought it home was like realizing that is that there's also a human side to the loss of that, that yeah, there, there's something about the death of, um, you know, Mikey Mansoor and M Mark Lee because of how it happened. If, uh, if you don't mind, you know, what, what were your thoughts? What was it like when you heard about what happened to, to Chris? <clears throat> um, so I was on a date night with Amanda. We were in South Haven, Mississippi. Um, the girls had just turned a year and, um, I get a text message from somebody saying, and it's not a team guy. It's like not, not a, not even a military guy okay. saying, I heard Chris Kyle just got murdered. I'm like, what? So I call Kevin Lace, Dauber. Okay. He's Dauber in the book. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And I call him. I'm like, hey, man. He goes, it's true. Like, like, that's how he answered the phone. Like, it's true. I was like, what? I'm like, what happened? He goes, Chris has been murdered. I was like, when? How? He goes, earlier today, this is what happened. And I was like, <laughs> I just remember, like, I was sitting on this, <clears throat> I was in this parking lot, <clears throat> and Amanda had come outside, and she was just, like, standing there, and I was talking with them, and I'm like, okay, and so I get the information from them, and I just, I just, like, started crying, <clears throat> and Amanda was, like, was, like, holding me. And I was, I, and I remember trying to figure out, like, who did I need to get a hold of? Like, cause I couldn't, like, I just, I remember at this moment, like, I couldn't remember, like, what did I need to do? Who did I need to call? Cause I was in the process of transferring out of the military. I'm getting ready to start my process out of the SEAL teams. And I just, I had some buddies from the SEAL teams that were in town for training uh, my old, like my old block that I, uh, of, of training, the training block that I worked for the assault cell. And I knew what bar and grill they're at, what restaurant they're at. And so I went over there and I told them, I'm like, Hey, I just found out that Chris got murdered. And they were all of them like, Chris, Chris, who I said, Chris Kyle. And they're like, what? No, there's no way. And I said, Yeah. And I, I just remember like them just sitting there and like a few of them, like, we're just like, what? Like, and like, I remember my old chief, like from that training cell gets up yeah. and like gives me a hug and like, he like was crying and he's like, bro, he's like, I did, you know, and we're all just like, I you just, you couldn't, you just couldn't comprehend it. Like it didn't, it didn't make sense. And, um, and, you know, and that night I just remember hanging out with them for a while and, you know, guys were making phone calls to other guys and trying to like, okay, hey, what do we need to do to support the family? Like, hey, you know, what's going on? And, you know, and some of the guys that were there with me, they were higher ranking uh, guys in the SEAL teams and they started calling Warcom and like different guys in the community and, you know, starting to organize like, okay, like okay, he's been murdered. Like we've got to do a funeral. Like we've got to take care of the family. We need to do all, there's all these things that we need to do. And, um, it was just, <clears throat> it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. Yeah. And it was all a blur. And I was actually, um, it was the next day or two. Maybe I think it was the next day because, yeah, my wife and I were out on a date night because I was leaving the next day f to go to San Diego for a for a work trip because I had started working at that because I had all that leave saved up as mm -hmm. I was getting out of the military. So I had already started working at the financial company yeah. full time because I was on that um, 
I can't remember what they call it now, but it's the leave that you get as you're transitioning out of the military so that you can go get a job and you can get, right. you know, so it helps with the transition. And so I'm doing this and I was already headed out to San Diego and I was like, okay, so I'm headed out there and, um, and I just remember, uh, the next day, like as I was walking onto the plane, every single newspaper that people had was about Chris getting murdered and the amount of people that had copies of American sniper sitting in their lap as I was walking on the plane, I was just like, and I remember getting mad at all the people that had the book now and that were reading about it. <clears throat> and then I remember I was just sad as well. I just, I just, I did. I just remember the anger that I had at everybody. Like you, you have no idea. You don't know who this guy was. Now you want to buy his book. You know, there's a lot yeah. of like that stupid anger that I had. Um, and also I was transitioning out of the SEAL team. So I was already angry and mad and you know, all this other stuff. And then now I find out that Chris got murdered and, uh, so I went to San Diego and, you know, um, yeah, did, I was there for like, you know, my transition out, my final, like, you know, signing all the paperwork and, you know, doing everything. And then, um, had the sales trip tacked onto it. So, um, you know, I could just be out there for extra time if I needed. And I was also trying to build my book of business and, um, it was really cool. Like the people that rallied, like, uh, Southwest airlines, all their employees, like the amount of people that donated their passes Basically, everybody was able to fly to everybody in the SEAL teams and their family members and anybody affected by it were able to fly on Southwest um, for free. Really? Yeah. They all donated their their buddy passes for round trip tickets for everybody. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was some, because Chris had been out, there wasn't, it wasn't military related. Right. So the military wasn't going to pay for travel. Yeah. Which... I get. Yeah, on the one of. hand you get, but it's also. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean. But w where is the line? I understand, you know. Um, but there's so much. There's so much about what we know about seals that came from yeah, I Chris agree. Kyle. For sure. You know, But his service wasn't any more honorable than a. A, a Marine that gets killed a hundred percent or a soldier that gets killed. And he right. knows that. And he knew that. Right. Yeah. He, he mentions that here that, you know, so much of it was, was the, you know, the luck of the draw, um, on, on what he was getting. He doesn't, he talks about, you know, the greatest sniper shot of all time, um, actually came from a jet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, and or the and he, tanks that we called in that right. leveled buildings that right. had enemy fighters in there. Like, let, let's see which one is going to be more effective, Chris. Right. Oh, let's let's put Chris, Matt, Benny, and myself all together on right. a, on a few ro rooftops where we have overlapping fields of fire. Yeah, and you have a building full of multiple multiple enemy fighters. Yeah, all right. We're playing cat and mouse. Because we can't be exposed because they'll shoot at us, right? Yeah. So we're playing cat and mouse with loopholes and peeking up and doing all these things. Or you call an I M1 Abram ba <laughs> Bradley battle tank that yeah. comes in. And they come in and like those people are shooting at the tank and on the inside, they're just laughing. They're like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> bing, yep. bing, bing, bing. Yep. And then they get in front of the building and then the turret goes. Do, 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 do. And then you see the building go. Yeah. If you're wondering what I'm doing, you should watch, yeah, on, watch YouTube. on YouTube. At least, <laughs> at least that little clip. Right. And then that right. building levels. Yeah. Killing every enemy fighter inside there. And guess what? And then it goes. Then drives yeah, away. Done. And then it's right. like, where else am I needed in the city? Like, yeah. let's see. Like the, the tank, the tank all day long. Yep. And Chris knew that. Matt knew that. Benny knew that. I knew that. All the guys knew that. Yeah. And then and the discussions about how much you guys supported each other, how the different branches of the military supported each other, particularly in that Ramadi deployment. And the, uh, the idea that a lot of that was because of the big boss man. 
yeah. is oh one hundred percent that yeah like that, that attitude really cool. is contagious. That yeah. attitude is so contagious, and if we're not being mindful of how our attitude affects the people that work for us, like you've got to really dial that in. Yeah. So like all of that stuff is, is so yeah. So Southwest incredible. made it. I remember flying yeah. out there with all the guys, and it was really cool. Also, see like the logistic coordination. Like I love logistics and coordination mm-hmm. and all that stuff, like travel and booking. That's what all, made like, you a good I point, just, man? I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I, I just really like all that stuff, like planning out routes and planning travel, and just I, I enjoy that stuff. And you know, Josh Strasberg also very good at that stuff. Yeah. He enjoys and, and it. And the whole ops team at uh, Echelon, Echelon Front is yeah. <laughs> pretty dialed yeah, in pretty good that. That. Yeah, yeah, that's what they do very well. Yep. So it. Um, and I just remember getting flying into Love Field, and it was like all the guys, and then all right, who's in what vehicles, and vehicles are going where, and Marriott donated. Uh, a bunch of hotel nights for free. So everyone got to stay at the Marriott for free. Oh. And it was just really cool seeing like just <clears throat> the people that came together right. to help support and, you know, police escorts everywhere we went, um, which is a good thing <laughs> when a bunch yeah. of team guys are drinking. And, you know, cause I mean, unfortunately like the default was like, all right, we're meeting at the hotel and then we're going to meet here and we're going to have some drinks to honor Chris uh, which is, you know, I get it. That's good. You know, it's good to do those things, but you know, guys just get completely hammered and it's like, right. all right, whatever, that's fine. Um, but you know, the, um, yeah, just all the guys that were there and just sharing stories and just, yeah, just get, you know, guys that hadn't seen each other for years and, you know, I hadn't seen Leif in years and really? it was like good to see him and, you know. Uh, I hadn't seen Jocko in a couple of years. And so it was like good to see all the guys again and how everyone was, you know, if they weren't deployed. And there were some guys that were deployed overseas that, you know, were brought back, you know, that were really close to Chris and they had the ability to come back. And some guys stayed overseas because they're like, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to do exactly what Chris wants me to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to stay over here. Take care of business. Um, but, you know, and then I remember I still have the picture somewhere. It saved. Um, I remember taking a picture of the GPS when we were going to Cowboy Stadium because that's where they held his service at. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like crazy because I remember they brought us in where the players like drive in. And, you know, because so we were able to drive down there. I'm like, whoa, what the heck? But the last road that you turned on before you got to where we're going was called Legend Way. Yeah. And I just like that. I just remember seeing that, and I was like, I took a picture of that as we were driving in, and um, yeah, it's just crazy, man. Uh, just going down there, and then you know, you know, they had an open casket down there for all of us to be able to, you know, pay our final respects. And I just like I'll never forget. <laughs> how he looked laying there it's like you know the same as like when you see all your guys when i saw seth's laying there you know but i just i just remember like how he looked laying there and i think what really wrecked me was seeing the other guys hurting looking at chris like other guys just angry and mad because of what had happened to Chris. And, you know, that, that really bothered me was seeing these other team guys that I looked up to, that I respected, that I loved, that I cared about, that always took care of me, that, you know, taught me a lot in the SEAL teams who guided me, um, seeing them hurting and seeing them upset and 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 sad was was hard and um you know and then we had you know we had the service and i read a letter from his parents um and then you know i mean they they did the service and then there was an escort and i um you know back and then the next day uh is when they were burying him and i had this i got this really really bad like sinus infection 
Mm-hmm. Like it was crazy. And I wasn't able to participate in like, I was like, I'm like hurting. And yeah. so I never, I wasn't a part of the escort from um, where he, where we had the ceremony down to where he was buried down yeah. in Austin. I wasn't a part of that. And, you know, everybody was a part of, for the most part was down there. And um, like that really bothered me for a very long time that I wasn't a part of that. But I mean, I know things happen for a reason and for whatever reason, I just, something happened and I just like, I mean, I was down hard. Yeah. I was like down. I remember like, cause in the room that I was with, Benny was there with me and he's like, was like, bro, like, do you need, do I need to go get a medic? Do I need to like, yeah. what do I need to do? And, you know, he's like trying to he got me some medicine and, you know, and then he was like, bro, you should just probably like chill. Like you probably just need to stay here and sleep. And that's what I did. And, and then I flew back to San Diego and, you know, finished the rest of my sales trip and checked out of the military. And, and for me, that was a little, you know, just kind of closing of that chapter. So it was a, it was a crazy time, man. Crazy time. It's, it's wild to, to think of all that. Cause like I said, like as a, at the time, as a civilian who knew nothing about, uh, really b- about what you guys had done in Ramadi or any of those things hearing, you know, we, we'd heard about Chris Cal because of the book. And then I was, I was one of those people that you would have been mad at in 2013. I was just mad at the world. Well, well, I'm just saying like, yeah. you know, in, I wasn't in actually state, mad right. at those people, but I, I was just like, yeah, I was like just now, angry. Like I was just angry. Yeah. yeah. And so, and I, I completely understand that, you know, when, when you're in, especially when you're in that spot. Right. So I remember hearing about it and, uh, and it was actually a, a guy who's now become a, a great friend of mine, um, a Texas Radio Hall of Famer, Mike Reiner, mm-hmm. who uh, started um, the the ticket. He's been in radio here for years and years, and now he, he started a new radio station called The Freak. And he was the one who was talking about it one day, was delivering the news. And he's not... Uh, he's not a military buff. He's a music guy. Most of the stuff that he talks about was baseball. Mm. And I remember him saying something to the effect of, uh, I'm not normally into this kind of thing. Mm. But he goes, but everything I'm reading and everybody that I've talked to says this guy was special. Yeah. And and he goes, and so uh, I think at the very least – we should we should talk about it. We should know what happened. And uh, and he's like, and you know, if you feel so inclined, read the book. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm gonna go check it out. Yeah. And then, you know, it was in uh, and I think in December of 2014. Mm-hmm. So uh, almost two years after, you know, Chris was murdered is when the movie comes out. And then so many more people knew the story. And what what I have thought is has been so cool is how uh, Tay and the family have given well, all of the things that they've given back. But, you know, when we were at the muster, mm-hmm. um, Mama Lee had Chris's book there to sell. And that even yeah. like after, you know, after uh, her son has passed, yeah. you know, after Mark's passed, after Chris has, has passed, that there's still this, you know, this one, one team, one mission thing going forward where yeah. we're now even posthumously like those two guys are helping out the the current generation of guys that are coming home which is one of the things chris was most passionate about yeah. to make sure that they get the uh, the help that they need and uh, it's just seeing all of that come full circle seeing how involved and how in alignment all of the families had to be in order to make those kind of things happen to see the way that you and the guys in echelon front still carry that mantle of like helping the guys that are coming home and doing the kind of things that are necessary in order to make sure that, you know, we regular civilians, right. That we not only know and honor their memory, but we can learn the same lessons that you guys learned the hard way Mm -hmm. to make sure that, that we have the skills and tools that we need in order to lead dude. It's, it has made, well, not only is it crazy, but it's made everything about what we do on the podcast. It's made everything about 
his story, about Marcus's story, about Jocko's story, that much more special. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like we, we mentioned this, I think on a, on either a previous Q and a or a previous episode, like your authenticity and your, uh, your candor and talking about all this stuff, man, it, it brings things home in a way that it humanizes the, the American soldier, it humanizes the Navy seal and it, it helps us to, uh, to remember not just the the sacrifice and stuff that that these guys gave, but also that we can examine where we're at and say, you know what, what if they can do this, what can I do? Yeah. And that's a that's a cool thing, man. And that's an incredible legacy that that Chris left behind, and one that you're continuing to build with with the stuff that you're doing with with Echelon Front, with this podcast, and uh, and with all your other endeavors, man. It's it's cool, dude. I trying to. Well, this has been a a pretty emotional we were talking about doing that as one of our like 20 minute q and a's and i was like nah, i think it needs some more time some more time than that but yeah you definitely you, you call that one correctly. yeah but uh, uh thanks thanks for talking about it thanks for yeah, sharing because absolutely. i know it is it is one of those questions that a lot of folks have had it's one of those questions that i've yeah i've had you know i want to i want to do some episodes i won't be able to read as much from some of these others but i want to talk one day about get into uh, to the life of Seth Stone and yeah, who yeah. was talk about him, talk about your relationship with, sure. with Mikey yeah. and then and with all those things. But dude, thanks for, thanks for allowing us to, uh, to go down this road. Yeah. Cause I know that it's, it wasn't an easy one. And yeah, yeah I just, I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's cool to see what his kids are doing now. It's like insane to see how big his kids are. I'm like, good Lord. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what happens. You know? Yeah. People grow up, they get big kids are young young adults now and you know teenagers and you're just like you know it's just pretty crazy but yeah chris chris was a good dude ma'am uh you know and 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 one of the things i said earlier is just as a reminder of like like we're all flawed humans chris was a flawed human life is a flawed human jocko is a flawed human mikey was a flawed human mark was a flawed human you know like yeah and that's the thing that Leif does a great job at reiterating when we do talk and share stories about our fallen brothers. It's like, hey, these guys are flawed just like all of us. Yeah, They just did some extraordinary things or unfortunate things happened to them. And, you know, Chris was doing an extraordinary thing trying to help somebody when an unfortunate thing happened. And, um, you know, I, I will say, you know, the unfortunate part, you know, it's just crazy how flawed our our system is. The dude that murdered her, you know what everybody said? They're like, thank God that happened in Texas. That dude's going to be dead in a few months. A dude's still alive. Yep. In prison. Wasting our taxpayers' money. And it's like, he killed two people. Yeah. He murdered two people. Yeah, Chad Littlefield yes. is, uh, is yeah. the other guy who was there with with Chris. Yeah. Yeah. He murdered both of those guys. And this individual <laughs> is still alive. And it's just it's it's unreal to me. Yeah. It's unreal. But <clears throat> again, as a reminder, we can't we can't waste energy on things that we can't impact and change. And that's a just that every time I think about it, it's always a good reminder for myself. Like, okay, is this something that you have the ability to change? Yes or no? No? Okay. Stop wasting energy and time on it. Yes? Yeah. Okay. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. And this is one of those things. So, like, I can't do anything about it. I can't, you know what I mean? I cannot do anything about it. It's the legal system and, you know, the courts. Like, I don't have the ability to influence any of that. And so, what I need to focus on is, okay. Am I living my life to honor Chris? Am I living my life to honor Seth, to honor Mikey, to honor Mark, to honor Ryan, to honor Derek, JT, Aaron, Luke, Scott, all these guys, you know what I mean? Charles, like Chuck, like, am, am I living my life to honor these guys? And if I can hold myself accountable each day, to try to live my life to honor them and to honor God, then I get, I think that gives me a good path to walk down. 
it allows me to think about, okay, hey, d- is what I'm about to do and or say a good representation to what these guys sacrifice their lives for? Is it a good representation of the opportunity that I have with Echelon Front? Is it a good representation of Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu? Is it a good representation of this podcast? Yeah. Yes or no? And that's something that I have to think about. And again, this is me holding myself accountable. Me imposing discipline upon myself. Like earlier today, I got frustrated with some dude literally walking in the middle of the parking lot, in the middle of the road, walking straight towards me as I'm driving. And I'm like, you're doing this just to be an a-hole. Like there's no other reason. Yeah. The guy literally is looking at me in the eyes, walking straight towards me, knowing that I can't move the left and right around him. I have to stop and let him walk around me. And so the guy's like just doing it to be a jerk. And I'm like, okay, cool. No factor, right? I can get frustrated, but I've got to let that go right away. Because what am I going to do about it? Get out of the car and fight him? That's stupid. Right. Like why? So I run the risk of getting beat up or hurt or stabbed or shot or injured like, or now I I beat him up and I get sued (laughs) and I lose my house. I beat him up and I go to jail and I lose my job at echelon front. So I just have to remind myself, am I living my life to honor God? And am I living my life to honor my fallen teammates? And if it's a yes, cool. Keep doing it. If it's a no, then I should probably not do that. Yeah. So all right. I think that's a good point. I think so, man. All right. Really appreciate you guys following us on social media and everything that you guys do to support the podcast. Um, every all the all of our listeners, people that are sharing these episodes, uh, subscribing, commenting. I mean, when you guys share it and then add a link, that's always legit. So we appreciate that. If you want to follow us on social media, I am at JP Denell. That's two N's, two L's with the last name Denell. Lucas is at L U C A S P I N C K A R D. If you want to follow Echelon Front, it's at Echelon Front. That's E C H E L O N F R O N T. You can check out what we have going on at echelonfront.com. Would love to see you guys at an upcoming individual FTX the council battlefield review or a muster. We have a lot of those coming up. It's going to be awesome. Or if you want myself or any of our instructors to come work with you and your team, just head to our website and see what we have to offer. If you want, you can also check out Jesus and jujitsu, which is a ministry that I'm a part of. It's at Jesus and jujitsu underscore USA. I am a part of that ministry with Isaac Tau F is Stephen little Josh Strasberger. We also have a podcast that comes out episodes every Tuesday. Uh, We try to do events about every six weeks at different gens, gyms, where we start off with a free jujitsu seminar. Somebody shares their testimony and then we open it up to open mat for just an awesome day of training. Uh, So check, make sure you're following us on um, social media to see when our next event is going to be coming up. I'm also a partner with a Texas beef company called Little Cattle Co. My best friend, Stephen Little, started that company back in 2017. My wife and I partnered with them early 2023. If you want to follow to see what we have going on on social media, that is at Little Cattle Co. Uh, our website is littlecattle.co, just our name. So it's just littlecattle.co. That's where you get that beef. Get that beef, dog. On, baby. We can deliver beef anywhere in the lower 48 states. We can send boxes of beef to your family members, to your friends, to your customers, to somebody that you maybe are trying to court and maybe you want to date. I think a box mm. of beef is a great way to start off that relationship with. So check us out. See what we can do to help serve your family with good quality Texas beef, grass-fed, grain-finished, and it is delicious. Also partner with my best friend Josh Strasberger for a printing company called On The Path Printing on Instagram. We are at On The Path, so check out what we have going on and let us know what we can do to help support you and your business and or charity, ministry, or just event that you want some sick t-shirts at check out bruiser arms you can also check out see what's going on what Leif Jocko and I have going on it's at bruiser arms also as we close it out I just always want to take a moment to thank origin and Jocko fuel for all the support they've given me and my family over the years everything that we do at echelon front the Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu events the Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu podcast this podcast it's amazing 
being able to follow and see what they have going on. If you want to see what they have going on, if you want some amazing 100% American-made gear, go to originusa.com. Also, go to jockofuel.com to check out some of the cleanest supplements out there, healthy, clean energy drinks, awesome protein, and all the new products. It's just incredible what they have going on out there. So appreciate all the support that you guys give to Origin and Jocko Fuel. Uh, and again, as I close it out, I just want to reiterate and remind you to challenge yourself to make sure that you are living your life to honor God and honor those in your life that are sacrificed something for you, whether it's a service member, a law enforcement member, first responder, or just a friend or family member that gave up something to help you get forward in life because there's plenty of those opportunities. If we really sit down and think and evaluate what we have in front of us, it's because multiple people have helped us get where we're at. So live your life to honor them and ultimately every single day, let's try to do a little bit better to live our lives to honor him. This has been the JP Denell podcast episode 28.